glad that you could join us on this Sunday morning. God bless you on today. To all of our listeners listening online all over the world, we are global. Streaming live right now at WEFT.org. There are those that are listening in other states that told me that they'll be tuning in right now to listen to this show. God bless you on today. And then those that are local, ones that I've met throughout the week, said that they will be tuning in at this time to join in, to listen to the conversation, the dialogue on today. And to all of those that have been listening throughout the weeks, the months, and throughout the year, God bless you on today. Many subjects, many things that we've been sharing and talking about and then we've been blessed to have, I mean, great guests, great guests to interview, to share, and, you know, the things, the profession that they're in, the, the belief that they believe in, the, what they're doing, and um, some of the things that they have achieved. And we've been very blessed, very um, fortunate to have those guests with us right here on Power and Praise. And today is no exception. We are glad and delighted to have with us on this morning the true Israel united in Christ on today and I've been um, looking forward to this show i um, been having a lot of people sharing with me about the last time you were here and they enjoyed it and I said we only <laughs> don't have the whole entire day to have dialogue and to share and then even after the show we've still had another show, actually two more shows coming out of that conversation. And so it was great conversation. And it's good to see where man can come and share and talk about things, especially our black males or um, those that are um, true, true um, Israelites to share and talk about things that are, that are relative, that are important. And um, they're going to share with you the reasons why. I'm so glad to have with me my co-host, Brother Eddie. He's always ready, and he's definitely steady, and um, he's going to be sharing with me on this morning um, with the absence of Brother Verdell Jones. God bless you on this morning. Um, our prayers are, are going out towards you, and um, thank you again. We have so many things to dialogue, to dissect, to get into, and I can't wait. This is going to be a full course meal on today, and we're going to be sharing and feeding you on this morning. Um, making sure that you've been able to get fed on today. That's our job, to edify you, to, uh, um, to build you up, um, to restore, to, to give you information, um, to bring your consciousness, to uh, consciousness awareness on different things, and even things that you may not even know of, to educate you on those things, those topics, those subjects and to have those that are experienced and able to articulate that information to you. We want to make sure that we address those to those that may not know anything about the subjects that we may know. To have those, we call them professors and teachers. And we have teachers with us um, today, Brother Eddie. That's right. And um, they're going to take us into class. We're going to go to class on this morning. Is that okay, my brothers? Yes, sir. All right, we're ready to be fed on today, on this morning. Um, I tell you what, Eddie, we're going to allow you to go ahead and take the mic, and I'm going to go do some other things, and um, I, it's about time we go to work. Okay, Let's Brother Eddie, it. can Let's we go to work? Let's do it, man. Let's go Let's to work. Wow, well, Father, I do. All right, last week we told you guys that we want to have you guys back in, and uh, they here, and they ready, like always. Um, I'm going to let these brothers introduce themselves before we get started, um, starting from right to um, this side. On back and then we're gonna go from there. Shalom, I am Officer Simakaya with Israel United in Christ, the chapter Chicago chapter. Hey Mosai Christ bless you all. This is Officer Bezalel with Israel United in Christ. Mosai Christ bless you all. This is Soldier Judah of Israel United in Christ, Chicago chapter. Officer Hosea, Israel United in Christ, Chicago camp. Alright, okay. These brothers are here to, to dialogue with, with anybody who want to call in. Uh, the, the calls are open. I know last time the brothers were here, we didn't get a chance to get uh, much of a uh, dialogue or uh, questions answered for these brothers about um, where you can find them at on social media or where their school is located, um, where they can, you know, where you can uh, get in touch with these brothers. We're going to do things a little different this time. We're going to give these brothers the floor, let them do their thing. We have, of course, some questions that uh, me and Dub J have uh, um, 
wanted you know to present to you guys. But first, we want you guys to go ahead and open up the way you guys <laughs> open up, take the floor, and then like you know we'll go from there, man. All right. So as we stated, we are Israel United in Christ. For anyone that wants to get in contact with us, we are like we said, we are the Chicago chapter. We have a school on the west side of Chicago at uh, 4339 West Division Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60651. And we can be contacted at 855-484-4842. And the extension for Chicago is 712. You can also call the same line if you are anywhere else in the nation. You can call that line and just listen to the impromptu message directing you to it, whichever city you may be in. Okay. But our direct extension is 712 to get with Chicago. And then to start off, start off, we can read <clears throat> John chapter 8 and verse 32. Because as we said that the, on the last show, our purpose and goal is to change the hearts and minds of our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, through the truth of God's word. And read that. This is the book of St. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible instructs us, Jesus the Christ instructs us, he said, you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that's going to set us free. Set us free from what? As we look at the, the, the things that's common in the news today, set us free from what? Our people are being shot down. We are in poverty. We are, we are in the lowest of all nations in the, in the nation. We don't know who we are. And let's see what the truth is. What is that truth that's going to set us free? The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So according to the Bible, the truth is God's laws. God's laws, through God's laws, that set us free. Because in the law, we, we, we discover who we are by looking in the book of Deuteronomy 28. And that's how we know who we are and what we're supposed to do when we look into God's laws. Facts. So um, let's read that, that verse again. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Uh -huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Uh -huh. And thy law. And in what? In thy law. So God's laws always was implemented in the Bible. From the very from the book of Genesis, it was we were civil people, always. It was a set of laws and instructions given. So it says is what? And thy law uh -huh. is the truth. That's the truth. That's what the truth is. And that's what we're here to spread. The truth, the gospel about who we are, what we stand for, our culture, what we eat, what to do, what not to do. All right? And as you look around today, even in the city of Chicago, Champaign, senseless murders, right? What's one of the laws that come, pop in your mind when it comes to murder? Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not kill. That's a law. But yet our people have fallen so far from the law that we have been numb to uh, to, to that law. Mm -hmm. Now people just shooting each other down, no problem. It's like a game now. So we're here to put the law, institute the laws back to our, in, to our nation. And I want to add one more thing. Get, get uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. Because what, we, what we're seeing happen now in today's time, we're seeing the Israelites wake up. And then it's what we're waking up at a at a alarming number because the truth is coming out. The truth, everything that that was written about us is coming out, and it's wise. It's more known now than it was years ago. So a lot of our people are under, coming to understand that we are the Israelites, and the Bible tells us that that time will will come, and we are in living in that time. So when you say for those who I'm sorry, but for those who don't know uh, mm -hmm. who's listening, when you say we. Um, pertaining to the Israelites, who are you particularly talking about? Uh, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans okay. who are the Israelites, according to the Bible. Okay. So read what you got. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So we understand today that that vision that was written on tables is what we're reading right now, the Bible. That vision was written on tables. Read. It says that he may run that readeth it. Read. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So he said the vision is yet for an appointed time. Meaning that the, the vision is written. Meaning the prophets of old seen the visions and they wrote it down. But it was set for an appointed time. Because a lot of things that they written, they didn't know what they were seeing. 
but they wrote it down that they were commanded. Read. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. The end is the times that we live in now. It says at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Meaning that the things that's going on today, we look in the Bible and see the, the destruction that's coming. The plagues that's, that's going on. The shootings and the senseless shootings and killings that's going on in our neighborhoods. The, uh, the pestilence, the COVID-19. Look in the Bible and see it. And it's just playing out. It says, it shall speak and not lie. That's it speaking. Basically, the, the law, the, the things that was written aforetime coming to pass. Read. Though it tarry, wait for it. So though it tarry, may it, though it may not seem like it's going to happen, it's going to just wait for it. It's coming. Read. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So that's it. So the, the things that were written in the Bible over the course of time, things have been, the prophecies have been revealed, starting from us going into slavery, us being sold unto our enemies, our names being changed, us not knowing, the the, the, uh, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, not knowing who we are, that we are the Israelites, and that we are God's chosen people. All of those things have been coming out over time, and now it's, it's coming out even more. Knowledge is increasing. So, you said that, we said we, that we are the children of Israel or the descendants of the tw uh, ancient 12 tribes of, of Israel. Correct. What sources or what versions of scripture you use in the Bible or either any sources that you use to prove that? Uh, is it the Bible only or? The, the sole things like we just read in John 8, 32, the truth shall set you free. What we use is the Bible. And we read out of the King James, the 1611 King James Version Bible. All right. You got any scriptures that, so that bring out prophecies that, that that shows us that we are the Israelites. Yeah. You're Deuteronomy 28. Uh, yes, before you get that, go to Isaiah 34 and 16. I want to show you something that uh, this Bible is a true book, and it tells you that the prophecies will not fail. And we're going to get Deuteronomy 28 to show you a prophecy that was spoken by one of the prophets, Moses. Watch this. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So the word seek means to thoroughly search. It says to seek ye out of the book of the what? Of the Lord. The book of the Lord is the Bible that was given to the nation of Israel. All right, read. And read. And do what? And read. Read on. No one of these shall fail. None of the prophecies that's inside this book will fail. Everything that's written here will come to pass. Some has already come to pass and some is yet to come. Read. None shall want her mate. There's no other book on the face of the planet that you can match with this Bible. The Quran, nothing. Read on. For my mouth it hath commanded. For his mouth it hath commanded. Now. Uh, and finished. his spirit it hath gathered them. And his spirit he gathered them. So watch this. Now we're going to read a prophecy by Moses. Uh, we're going to start, start at Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. So we can see. So we can see that anybody that is not familiar with the Bible, you can see what the who, who the book of Deuteronomy was written to. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel, in Laban and Hazareth, and Dezahad. So from reading this verse, we see that Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy and he wrote it to the Israelites. So now let's jump up to chapter 28 and let's see what's, let's see some of the things that Moses wrote to the Israelites. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it's written, he says, it shall come to pass, meaning something's going to happen in the future to the Israelites when they when they chose to break God's commandment, not looking to his commandments to do them. And he said, what's gonna happen? He said when he when they when they don't keep his commandments, that curses will come upon them. And we know curses, a curse is a bad thing. So curses will come upon the Israelites if they chose not to do and uphold God's commandments. Let's go up, jump up to verse 31. Verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine any before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. So when you, when you read this verse, 
who do you have to think? Who did this happen to? When we, we, we right now we're in America. You have America, you have a Central America, and you have South America. South America. You have uh, Christopher Columbus, Hernan Cortez. Uh, what's some other names? The Spaniards America that came with the conquistadors, Americo Vespucci, uh -huh. the conquistadors that came over here and said they found new land. Who was living here? The so-called Native Americans and the Hispanics. Mm -hmm. They were here already. So when they came here, what did they do? They took their they took their oxes, they took their buffalo, and they slain them before they had. It was what was the number? It was like a, a it was a, millions. It was millions of a buffalo that they killed, and it's, it's images and pictures that you see where buffaloes is stacked up dead. And then they came. When you add to it, they took this land, and now we see it today. They trying they trying to tell the uh, so called Mexicans go back to Mexico. They trying to build a wall. Why? But they were here already. Mm. So this it says, thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Uh, what does it say? The, the land. Um, verse 33 yep jump to verse 33 the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always who is that happening to today because remember we're reading the curses about the Israelites but it says thy land the fruit of thy land and all thy labors the fruit of thy land is what your crops you grow apple trees, uh, you have the fruit of the vine, grapes, you have uh, cotton, all of those things, what was done? We was, we, it was taken from us and then we was on those cotton fields picking cotton, mm. picking tobacco, picking sugar, sugar cane. The fruit of your land, the, the things that we were working, we was working the seed in the ground and doing all of that, but it turned around to be against us. Mm. It's, our enemies is taking it and they, they reaping the fruit of it and we're not. Wow. We getting the back the, the back end of it. Go back with go back to thirty two. Verse thirty two. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So it says thy sons and thy daughters are given to another people. Whose sons and daughters were given to another people? When you look at the uh, various slaves, you got twelve years of slave, even roots. What was mm -hmm. happening to us during slavery? Our children was taken from, well, let's say we was in Virginia, mm -hmm. our children was taken from us and sold to the slave master in, in, uh, in, Atlanta, in Georgia or, or, or North Carolina. Our children was taken from us and what, we, what could we do? We had no power. We had no military might to get our children back, to bear arms and be like, no, nah, we're going to war. No, it was nothing that we could do. Why? Because we was in captivity. Wow. We was, in a, we was taken and we, we was brought into a land that our oppressors took over and they, they ruled over us and they took our sons and daughters and all we could do was long for our children, cry for our children. Even today, what you got? DCFS. You have various ways where they take our children from us and there's nothing that we could do because they build a case up on, they build a case on us and take our children, strip our children from us. Ice. You got ICE dealing with the uh, our Mexican brothers. Mm -hmm. ICE taking what they're doing, <clears throat> separating families, talking about they sending the father and mother back to Mexico and then their children is left here. And what can they do? Nothing. And who is this talking about? Remember, we're reading Deuteronomy, it's addressed to the Israelites. Jump up to uh, 64. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So it says the Lord will scatter you among all, all people. So we have to remember, we have to remember what we read in Deuteronomy 28 and 15. It says when we broke God's commandment, the Lord was going to send curses upon us. So now he's reiterating that. It says the Lord shall scatter thee among all nations. Wherever you go on this earth, the Israelites are there. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are there we the, and when you look at the the history of the the Hispanics and Native Americans, it's not commonly taught or known about. What we always see is the uh, the the blacks coming over here on slave ships, but when they came over here and conquered this land, they they also sent our Hispanic brothers and Native Americans, which are the northern, which we consider the northern kingdom. We they send they sent them over to Spain uh -huh. to serve as slaves. Wow. Same thing. And that's why we know that 
the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites, according to the Bible. Now, and the one thing I will read that again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So, it's, so it says, the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So among every nation, we're there. We're there. We all, we may be, we, when we different shades and everything, we look different, but we're in every nation. Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So it says you're going to serve other gods. In these lands, we're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. What are the major religions that are, that are today? And I know our brother, our uh, Muslim brother mentioned it uh, the last time we were here. He mentioned that uh, Muslim was the, was the fastest growing uh, religion in the world <clears throat> now. But what this is saying, it says, you shall serve other gods which neither thy father nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. If you do a, if you even do a Google search of the two largest religions, what are the two largest religions? Christianity and Muslim. And what do they, what are they, what are they, um, idols? You have the Christians, Christianity, they use the wooden cross. Everybody got a cross on their neck. Everybody got a cross hanging down their window. And then Muslim. What they do, the rock that's in Mecca, mm -hmm. the uh, Kaaba stone, mm -hmm. wood and stone. So that's what, and that's what the bulk of our people. When you when you examine history and you examine our cultures, even now, most of our people are engulfed in those religions. You guys most definitely <clears throat> bring the word out in a way that I mean, it's, it's I, I I'm sure that you guys get a lot of uh, oppositions and because I've been in you know church and reading the Bible and all that man for a long time and. There's a lot of scriptures that you guys bring out that I, I'm not familiar. I mean, it's like the pastor don't bring that out, <laughs> mm -hmm. but you guys don't have no problem bringing that out, and, and and that's the that's the part of it that a lot of people want to bypass. You know, about children being taken away from their parents, and and, and this is a prophecy. These are, you guys are reading prophecy that has been written in a book that was written thousands of years ago, and, and we we really appreciate that. So, what would you guys say to? Because like a lot of people, when you say to uh, about um um nationality um, uh, when it comes down to God there's no there's no nationality when it comes down to God everyone is all and there they, they will someone even go so far as to say that uh, Christ had no color mm -hmm. the people of the Bible you know children of Israel had they, they just you know there's no records of, of what you know what their nationality was or their skin color or whatever it may be what what would you guys say to people who say things like that or, or oh the records are uh, right here in the Bible See, here's the thing. First and foremost, give me Revelations 1 and 3. Here's the problem with, I think, with our nation. You know, you got to remember, during slavery, we was, t we was forced not to read or write. You got caught reading, they, they cut your hands off. You understand? That's why a lot of times they, they had a shackle and chain certain, wa certain ways. Watch this. Read what you got. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Blessed is he that read it. What does the Bible say? Blessed is he that read it. What, when you read, you're going to find out what to do, what not to do. That's what the Bible says. Blessed is he that read it. Now, from that, um, let's go. Um, Say your question one more time. I'm sorry. You said color. Well, that's not found, right? It, the records is here. Watch this. Give me Job 30. Uh, 30. We're going to get color in the Bible. Is this, this is something that our people, I, I don't know if they breeze over it. Or possibly the Lord just having opened their eyes. That could be what it is. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 30. Uh-huh. My skin His is what? my skin. His skin is what? It's black. Now, Job told you what he looked like. Let's get uh from the mouth of uh Solomon. King Solomon. Let's see what King Solomon said. Because we've heard these questions numerous of times, and we don't run for we deal with this. This is our history book. When you open this book up, you're supposed to see yourself in it. But you don't see yourself when it's talked to you by the hands of your oppressor. That's why when you see these these movies and these shows that come on, they paint the depiction of themselves. They don't paint us in these movies, all right? That's why when movies like Black Panther come out, oh, we hold on to stuff like that, right? But watch this. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. I, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Uh-huh. Verse 5. I am black. What did Solomon say? I am black. So Solomon clearly said, I am black. Read. But comely. But handsome. That's what the word comely means. I, now, remember uh, was the 70s? I'm black and I'm proud. 
That's what he's saying right, right here. He's black and he's handsome. Okay? Let's get one more. One more color scripture. Because it's all through the Bible. It's all through that. So whatever questions you come with, we have to answer the solutions. Christ. Christ? Christ don't matter. Yet. Oh, they say Christ don't matter. Let's watch this. I'm going to show you that Christ look just like you and I. Watch this. Because some people say, oh, no, uh, he, was, he was olive tone, or nobody knows. What do you mean? You mean tell me he walked the earth with disciples, bam, and nobody knew how he looked? That's foolishness. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. And for the record, the root word of revelation is to reveal. So we're about to reveal what Christ looked like. Watch this. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Start a little bit. Uh, what you at? This is verse 1. Yeah, okay, here we go. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the revealing of what Christ looked like. Watch this. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. To show unto his servants which things that must come to pass. Watch this. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Uh -huh. Now let's see what John saw in the spirit. Let's jump to that. Uh, verse 14. No, jump to verse like 8. Verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Read. which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Watch this. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation uh -huh. and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos. Uh -huh. Let's go. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. What did John say? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. On the Lord's day. Here's another thing that we got to address. The Lord's day is what? The seventh day, the Sabbath, the day of rest. John, the revelator, said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I mean, he was keeping the commandments. He was rehearsing the righteous acts on the Lord's day, which is the Sabbath day. Read. And heard behind me uh -huh. a great voice. So if you heard something behind you that was loud, what's going to be your reaction? Turn and look. Turn and look. Watch this. Read. As of a trumpet saying. No, he said his voice was like a, the sound of like uh, equivalent to a trumpet, meaning it was loud. He was saying what? I am Alpha and Omega. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. Read. The first and the last. The first and the last. Read. And what thou seest. What you see with your own eyes. Read. Write in a book. Write it. Document it. Record it in the book. Mm. And send it unto the seven churches uh -huh. which are in Asia, uh -huh. unto Ephesus, Read. and unto Smyrna, Watch and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodosia. Where all our people was at. All, the, all our people, all Israel was there, right? Jump down. 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, this is what he recorded. This is what he wrote down, what he saw. He said his what? His head and his hairs uh -huh. were white like wool. Uh, like what? Like wool. Who on the earth today got woolly texture hair? Mm. Bring it out. What nation of people? And let's not play games. Mm. And if you're listening, feel free to call in. Okay. Because we're here for y'all, all right? What nation of people on the earth today got woolly texture hair? And if you had, a, uh, I think the, one of the dictionaries that was dated like 17 something, it actually had the definition in it. But today you look it up, of course, we know the so-called white man, he changed the words out. All right? Yeah, it, was, it actually said Negro hair. Mm. Watch this, read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now. That may throw you for a loop, but it says his eyes was a flame of fire. It was a prophecy. Let's get the prophecy what they was talking about when it says his eyes was a flame of fire. Does that mean his eyes look like Cyclops from X-Men? No. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. Uh-huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. That was a prophecy. What book that's in? The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 12. So it was prophesied that the Messiah, Christ, when he come, his eyes are going to be what? Red with wine. Because Christ drank wine in moderation. He, one of his first miracles was what? Turning water into what? To wine. To wine. So let's go back. Watch this. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh-huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So we established that he got woolly hair, right? Negro hair, right? Read. As white as snow. Uh-huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine in moderation. Read. And his feet. His what? His feet. Now, during that time, they walked around in open toe sandals. So John the Revelator, when he turned around, he actually recorded everything he saw from his head to his toes. He said his what? And his feet. His feet. Like unto fine brass. If you ever get a picture, you can Google it. Fine brass is a depiction, I mean, it's a derivative of brown. Different shades of brown, right? 
So if you got something that's brown, check this out, read. And in a furnace. So if you take something that's brown already and you burn it in the furnace, what color would that be? Become darker. Darker. Black. Black. So if Christ's feet is black, what color is his arms? Black. What about his neck? Black. What about his face? Black. Christ is a black man from the tribe of Judah. All right? Mm. So the color is in the Bible. All right? Let me get back to you. Can I, mm. can I add to that real quick? Get John 7 and 37. 7 and 38, I mean. John chapter 7 and 38. Because a lot of a lot of people, when we, when we read that, a lot of people say, oh, that's him in his glory. That's him in his heavenly body. So let's see what, let's see what Christ said. The book of St. John, chapter 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So notice he said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. So he's referring to what the scripture said about him in the past. past. So he said, he's letting you know, and this, remember, this is, a lot of this, what we're reading now is written for us today. So he says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. Let's get Daniel 10. And let's see what Daniel 10 said. Because he's saying, what he's saying, in a nutshell, is I look the same as the scripture said I look like. So let's read what Daniel 10 says. The book of Daniel, chapter 10, and verse 6, verse 5. And I lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with a fine gold of euphaz. So now this is Daniel writing down what he's seen in the same, same similar type vision that John seen. Read. His body also was like the burrow, and his face as the appearance of lightning, mm -hmm. and his eyes as lamps of fire. So you notice it's saying the same thing that we just read in Revelation 1 and 14. It's saying the same thing, describing the same thing about Jesus the Christ. Read on. And his and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. So his hands and his, his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, which is a derivative of brown. Christ was a black man, and the Bible proves that. So there's no if if, if you're saying if the thought process is oh he has no color, it doesn't matter. No. He said, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said. So, it, it's yes, the, the most important thing is for us to keep the commandments. But we have to believe on Christ as the scripture said. He was a black man, according to the Bible. Some of these scriptures, are, of course, um, some would say, oh, this is, like you said, they, they would say, oh, this is uh, Christ. When you when, he, when Reve, uh, John the Revelator had seen Christ, um, uh, and his, it was in his spiritual form. Um, a lot of, that would be called, um, a lot of the scriptures, they would be taken as parables or, or of mm -hmm. course, we know that some of them are. Um, so you use, how do you, what, how do you distinguish the difference between a parable and something that's actually, like, it's, it's true? So like, do you use, is it, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, finish your question. No, is it, are, are you, do you use precepts from because some would say, okay, going into the Old Testament, as oh, they, they would, they would just, just say it would strictly stay with the new. Mm. So what, what would you say about that? Oh, so, so two scriptures, you got that in Job? Yes, sir. This is the book of Job, chapter 11 and verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. So notice, he says and he, that he would show you the secrets of wisdom. That he is talking about the most high God. He, says, he would show you the secrets of wisdom, read. That they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. So when he says they are double, read, read that part again where it says they are double. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom that they are double. So the secrets of wisdom are double. So as we read the Bible, a lot of the things are literal. It's literally happened what it, what it is. But it says they are double. So there's the secrets, is, there's hidden things. And how do, we get the, how do we unlock those secrets of the Bible? Yeah, Isaiah 29. The book. Read. The book of Isaiah. 28. Yep. Chapter 28, verse, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So who, who is going to get knowledge? Who's going to understand doctrine? Who's going to have some understanding? Who's, who, who's the most high going to give it to? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. The milk is referring to the laws. First and foremost, you have to be keeping God's laws to even get an inkling of wisdom of what the Bible is talking about. 
Read. For precept must be upon precept. So it says precept must be upon precept. When Pre you read one precept here, you got to go to another precept, and it's going to give you a clearer understanding of that precept. Read. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So how we get understanding of the scriptures and how you unlock those secrets, first and foremost, you have to be keeping God's laws. Then from there, it's precept upon precept. Because the Bible explains itself. The scriptures tell us that there's no private interpretation of the scripture. And that's what you see among, amongst the, uh, Christianity. It's private interpretation. They read one scripture and then go an hour and a half off one scripture telling their stories and imaginations of their mind. Real quick, and just to back him up what he said, because he said, in order for you to even get it, you got to be keeping the commandments. Psalms 111 and 10. Mm. Check this out. And this, this, like he said, precept must be upon precept. When it says here a little and there a little, you got to go here in the Old Testament and there in the New Testament. It's all, all one book, right? Mm -hmm. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh huh. A good understanding. A good what? A good understanding. So in order to understand this Bible, read. Have all they that do his commandments. You got to be doing the commandments. You got to be keeping them. You got to rehearse the righteous acts. What's written in this Bible, you got to be doing it. That's the only way you're going to understand what you're reading. It's that simple. Hmm. It was asked, it was, the comment was made, and you brothers can, can testify this, that on, about God, that is, it was a big bang theory. And there are people that are believing that God is a big bang theory, that he just somewhere sometimes just popped in and it just started, that's how everything started from a big bang theory. And even they even created a show called the big bang theory. So can you share on, and I know how I feel about it, but the comment was made the last time you brothers was here that God just appeared at like a Big Bang Theory. So go ahead and, and, and share with, about that. Uh, get 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Yes. So 2nd Ezra is the book out of the Apocrypha that was taken out of the Bible in the, seven, in the late 1700s. So what we have to read is uh, it's the same thing that's written in Genesis chapter 1, mm -hmm. but it gives it a, in a little bit different detail. Read uh, 6 and start at 38. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 38. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and saidest thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a, was a perfect work. And then was, was the... So, so notice in 38 it says... So this is the prophet Ezra, which is Ezra, out of the when you look in the Old Testament, it's Ezra, same prophet. He's referencing what the work that the Most High God did that we that we look at in Genesis chapter one. He says, "Thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said thus: Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work." So the Most High is show, showing that the Most High created the earth he created the earth and the uh the constellations the stars the moon and all of that read mm. and then was the spirit and darkness and silence were on every side uh -huh. the sound of man's voice was not yet formed so man was not yet made on the, at this time read then commandest thou a fair light to come forth out of thy treasures that thy work might appear so then he says he commanded a fair light to come Upon the, so, read, read on. upon the second day thou madest the spirit of the firmament and commandest it to part asunder and to make a division betwixt the waters that the one part might go up and the other remain beneath. So it says he commandest of he says he commandest it to part asunder and to make a division. No look, I'm starting too low. It says upon the second day thou madest the spirit of the firmament. That firmament is talking about you have the sky and what they call the ozone layer. What is that firmament? It's water. Mm. Because we know water is, has various forms. You have the water that you see in the ocean, the seas, and then you also have the skies. How do you, when the clouds come together, what do you get? You get rain clouds and rain come from those clouds. The air that we breathe, it's, it's water, but it's in the form of air. Space. The firmament that we was talking about, the firmament 
you have the sky, you have the ozone layer, then you have the firmament above the skies, which is called the heavens, which is space, outer space. It's water. Why do you think when they when 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 they go up into space, why do you think they're floating? What are they floating in? And what do they train? They train in what? Underwater. They train underwater mm. to learn how to Float. move in space. Mm -hmm. It's what's talking about the water. Read. Upon the second day, thou madest the spirit of the firmament and commandest it to part asunder and to make a division betwixt the waters that the one part might go up and the other remain beneath. Mm -hmm. Upon the third day, thou didst command that the waters should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth. Six parts hast thou dried up, and thou kept, kept them to the intent that of thee some being planted of God and till it till might serve thee. So this is talking about now, it's talking about the oceans and the dry land. The Most High created that. He created the water that's here. And when you look at the water, the ocean, the waters on the ocean and the different beaches, what do they do? They come up on the shore, on the sand, and they go back to their place. Mm. That's a big bang. You limit you limit God to a big bang to things to, things are so in order mm -hmm. that it's a big bang and it's just it just boom and we 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 got flesh and bones. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Doesn't the most high sense. God created it. And yes. like it's like we like let's go to Genesis one. The book of Genesis chapter one, verse eleven. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So the Most High made the grass, the herbs of the field, the trees, the fruit trees. He created all of that, and he said, once he did it, he, he created it upon the earth, and it was so. Read. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw it, that it was good. So he created it, and he said whose seed was in itself. When you look at an apple, you bite into the apple, you get to the middle. What's in there? A seed. Why? So that seed, you can plant that seed and get more apples. Mm -hmm. God created these things. Read. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And, Read. And God, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So the Most High created the lights in the firmament of the heaven. That's our sun. And I'm in the moon. He said, one to do the die, divide the day from the night. Uh, where does it say that? Jump to 16. Verse 16. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. The greater light to rule the day, which is the sun. Because the sun rules the day. You had the sun, sun up, the sun down. Read. And the lesser light to rule the night. The moon. The moon gives off a light that now nowadays we don't see it as, we don't see it as a... Uh, it's evident because you got street lights and all of that, but when you go somewhere where it's completely dark and the moon is out, the moon shines at night. It's not as important. And it says the lesser light to rule the night. The moon rules the night. Ooh. He made the stars also. And also the stars. Jump up to 19. Verse 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So this was the fourth day he created the lights. The sun, the moon, the stars. Read. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above, the earth and the open firmament of heaven. So he says here that he, he made every moving creature that's in the waters. So that's your fish, your sharks, the whales, dolphins, dolphins, your uh, starfish, so everything that's in the waters, the most I created. Read. And he says, the fowl and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So that's, how you, that's where you get your birds. You got your eagles, your hawks, right. your doves, uh, your uh, red robin, all your birds. He created all of those things. Read. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Jump to 23. Verse 23, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So this is the fifth day. Now on the sixth day, read. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. So this is where we have the, the cattle, the cows, the uh, buffalo, the pigs. God created the cattle that's on the dry land. 
Read. And it was so. Read. And God made the beast of the earth after this. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And on the sixth day he created man in his image to have dominion over everything else that he created, to have dominion over his creation. Read on. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So this on face face value in what we, that scripture that we just read where it said uh, in Job, Job where it said uh, the secrets of wisdom are double. Here it says so God created man in His own image and the image of God created He Him. That created He Him was His chosen people, the sons of God. This is this is the Israelites, but we wasn't called Israelites then, but we were the sons of God. Read. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. Talking about the, the nations that were outside of Israel. That's right. So in, in this one verse, it speaks about, it wasn't just Adam by himself when God created man. God created, he created his chosen people and the people around him. But Adam, the, out of his chosen people, was set up to rule over the whole earth. Including the other men, other nations and other men that was created. Wow. Well, we just crossing the first hour. We already done went from the color of Christ to addressing the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> um, we cooking in here, brothers. Y'all came ready. Um, addressing a couple of callers real quick. Um, one of the callers called in and then wanted to thank you guys for coming and uh, pre uh, preaching the word and bringing the gospel uh, out the way you guys do. All, All praises. praises to the most high. All praises. And we're going to redo the disclosure real quick while we're at the second half. Uh, 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 the views and opinions expressed on the air are solely those of the speaker and not to necessarily uh, represent those of WEFT, Champagne, Prairie Air, air Inc., Station Management, uh, the Board of Directors of WEFT Associates. So, you guys, so you have a church, you say, or do you guys, you guys go to church on Sundays? Yeah, we have what's called uh, a church. It's a school of learning, all right? Uh, and we, we congregate, we learn on the Sabbath day, uh, which is the seventh day of the week. Uh, and that's what we worship. Matter of fact, let's get that, according to um, Leviticus 23. Oh, stay in Genesis. Oh, stay in Genesis. Oh, okay, yeah, let's stay there. Let's get the seventh day. And then we're going to we jump to the video. Let's watch this. this is the I'm going to show you that um, we was ordained to worship on the seventh day, not Sunday, which is actually the first day. All right. Watch this. Read. The, the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, mm -hmm. and all the host of them. And on the seventh day. What day? Seventh day. Okay. God ended his work which he had made. Read. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. He did what to it? He blessed the seventh day. So notice he said he blessed the seventh day. So the seventh day is different from the other days that he was creating, right? He blessed the seventh day. Read. And sanctified it. And he set it apart from the other days. It's different from the other days. Read. Because that in it. He had rested from all his work, which God created and made. And made. So, watch this. Give me Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. Then we're going to go to Exodus dealing with the Sabbath. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. Uh-huh. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to who? Unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Read. And say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord. Concerning the what? The feasts of the Lord. Read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Holy convocation. The word convocation means gathering or assembly. A holy assembly of people. Of Israelites, read. Even these are my feasts. Read. Six days shall work so be the, done. The Most High God gives us instructions. Out of seven days, He says six of those days. That's when you make your money. That's when you work. That's when you hustle. That's when you provide for your family. Read. But the seventh day. But the seventh day. Remember the day He blessed, that He sanctified. Read. Is the Sabbath of rest. That's the Sabbath of rest. That there's no working on that day. There's no hustling. There's no cooking. There's no buying. There's no selling. We're gonna prove all that. 
on the seventh day. Read. And holy convocation. A holy convocation meaning assembly. That's we come together on the seventh day and we learn the scriptures. We learn the Bible. Iron sharpens iron. We build each other up. Read. Ye shall do no work therein. So do no work on the seventh day. Read. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. In all your dwellings. Meaning wherever you at on the earth, you're not supposed to do work, buy, sell, cook, none of that on the Lord's Sabbath, which is the seventh day. All right? Yeah, Rip. So if you guys just joining us, we're here with the brothers from IUIC Chicago. They're here to, to, uh, to do their thing. We, we're addressing uh, all the callers, uh, questions or comments. Uh, we're in here uh, dialoguing, so we're going to just continue. Did you, uh, I just wanted to add to that. I know you said we have a church, and I just wanted to address that, just the word church. Okay. Because okay. we do have a church. Okay. And look, we're going to see who who is the church. Because that's the, the topic that we're dealing with. That's one of the things that we're dealing with. Who is the church? Acts chapter 7 and verse 37. The book of Acts chapter 7, verse 37. This is that Moses. So which, this is, remember, we're referring to Moses. And as we read, we know that Moses wrote Deuteronomy, as we read earlier. And he also wrote the first five books out of the Bible. So read. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord, shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. So in this he's, he's referring to Christ. He made reference to Christ, and this is the New Testament referencing the Old Testament of something that was written in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Read. And, this is, what, and then he said, no, this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel. This is what he's talking about. In the New Testament, he's still addressing the children of Israel. Read. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Wait, he was where? In the wilderness. No. Church. In the church in the wilderness. It says, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who was in the wilderness? Was all nations in the wilderness? No, they weren't. Israel was in the wilderness. So that's how we know from Old Testament to New Testament, this Bible has not changed. It's for the nation of Israel, the church in the wilderness. Read. With the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Those lively oracles that they gave unto us is this Bible. God's laws, statutes, and commandments because that's what gives us life. Of course, in every nation there's different races, of course. And we we actually assume the name of African American. That's what we are known as. We all, of course, been previously known for different names: uh, Afro American, um, um, Black. It was, right. was was once uh, a representative of our nationality. How come we, as descendants of the slaves, always have our nationality changed all so often? And I mean, I don't. Is it that we assume these because we don't have a um, uh, 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 the picture or, or a record of, of, of who we are? Wow, that's a great question. Great question. Um, first and foremost, if you ever watch movies like Roots or uh, was it Goodbye Uncle Tom or something like that or Django, um, those names was, was beaten to us. We, it wasn't something that we came up with. They, you got to understand history too. Whatever landmass we took over, we named ourselves after that land. So when we went into captivity. These other nations, they knew who we were. They knew exactly who we were. They knew that we were the chosen people, Israelites. So therefore, they reclassified us, renamed us purposely, so we can forget where we come from, who we are. What you got? You want what? to finish on uh, limitations for, for the last question? We'll come back. Let's deal with it right now since we got right. listeners for the sake of time. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15. Uh-huh. Verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Mm -hmm. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. By what? Mm -hmm. Another name. So guess what? Being reclassified and renamed, that's part of the curse that's on the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. We're going to precept that with uh, Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Wow. So that was a really good question because the name African American, that's actually the name of two white men. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, African is the name of an Italian, um, Roman Italian, uh, what was he, general. Mm -hmm. His name was uh, Leo Scipio Africanus. You can look this up. And America was a name of a, a Spanish, uh, a Spaniard explorer. His mm -hmm. name was Amerigos Vespucci. 
So can two white men come together and make babies? <clears throat> no, makes no sense. So how can we be called African American? You see what I'm saying? Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Uh-huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So the Lord said, when we go into captivity, we was going to become an astonishment. Astonishment is another word of amazement. So when other nations see us, they're like, damn. Wow. Y'all went from kings to, to Negroes? Y'all went from ruling the earth to at the bottom of society? So they, when other nations see us, they're astonished when they look at us. Because they know how we used to be. Read it. A proverb? A proverb is a wise saying. Or somewhat like a stereotype like all black men like chicken. Or all black people, uh, all black men are late for work, all black men are baby daddies, mm -hmm. all black women are baby moms. It's, it's like stereotype. It's a wise saying. Huh? Lazy. All black people are lazy. You see what I'm saying? Black. So we say we're gonna become a proverb. Read. And a byword. And a byword. A byword is you being called by every name but the name that you were actually given. So they call us, like you said. Afro-American, African-American, Negro, Black, colored. So we being called by every name but the true name was given, which was Israel. Mm. Read. Among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So no matter where we at in the world, they're not going to call. The other nations, they're going to refuse to call us Israel. They're going to call us Black or the Black man or, or the colored man or the Negro. You see what I'm saying? They will not fix their lips to say, oh, the Israelite. No, they're not going to do that. Good question, though. The, the people that's over in Israel right now, who, who, uh, these are the, the Jews. They know to be Jews. So it, um, the Jews consist of uh, some of the tribes of Israel, right? Uh, which would be the southern tribes, or what it, uh, uh, which would consist of uh, three, I forget which three tribes, but um, they consist of the, what you call Jews. I guess what would be the kingdom of the southern tribe would be Judah. And so that would be short for Jew, right? Uh, that's why they call they were called Jews. Who are they then? That's they are calling themselves Jews. So the ones that's calling themselves Jews, because you, you're right, the Jew is short for Judah, and the kingdom of Judah was the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay, right. That's three. Which mm. today are the tribes that really, for the most part, maintain the darker complexion. But. Um, you said who the get let's start with Revelation. So when you start with the those that are in Israel now, notice they call themselves Jewish. Right. Yeah, and they're different skin color, they're not. <laughs> yeah, when you add the prefix, when you add the prefix ish to any word, what does that mean? Ish means that you're like something. So Jewish is like the Jews, meaning they all they're doing is they were taught our custom and our ways and they and they actually aren't even doing that right. But let's read that Revelation 2 and 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So let's, let's, we, we, the, the Bible was written to Israel. So starting off, he said, I know your works and your tribulation. And we read it again, read it again from the top. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So the Most High said, I know your works, your mm. tribulation, and poverty. Who's in poverty? Are they in poverty? This, this in our land. Are they in poverty? Mm. Those that funded the slave trade. Yeah. That's 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 pretty much funded. They in control a lot, a lot more than what we think. Mm -hmm. But are they in? Are they in tribulation? Mm. Are they in poverty? Mm -hmm. No, they're not. No. We are. We are. Read. And poverty. But thou art rich. But he says, thou art rich. Why are we rich? Because God chose us as his chosen people. We are the, we are the Israelites. We are the true Jews. That's why we are rich. Because as we keep, as we are returning to keeping God's commandments, once this kingdom is over, it's our kingdom is next, next. We got next. So we are rich because the promises was given to us. And we just broke them. That's why we are in a lower state. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So he said, I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not. Mm -hmm. That's blasphemy. And what's what bl mm -hmm. not even, blasphemy gets destruction. But it says, I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not. They stole our heritage, stole our history because we are we are in a lower state because we broke God's commandments. So they, uh, when was it? The, I think in 1969 they say it was a, the Israel was 
declared uh, a state of something. 1964. Then they were... Oh, the state of Israel. That was yeah. The state uh, of Israel. 1943. Mm. But they stole our heritage and now they are living as us. And he said, he, the most I said, I know the blasphemy is the, them to say they are Jews and are not. They are not the Jews. They are not the Israelites. We are. Mm -hmm. Is that it on that? But are the synagogue of Satan. He says they are the synagogue of Satan. Because even when you when you look at it, they they have uh, gay parades there. They mm -hmm. have all type of stuff which goes against mm -hmm. God's laws and commandments. Right. They are the synagogue of Satan. Satan is against God's laws. Right. Against God's people, and that's what they are. Mm -hmm. That's why they call Jewish, because they are not the real Jews. We are, because we fit the. When you look at Deuteronomy twenty-eight, the curses that we've brought out, we went into slavery. Our children was taken from us. They didn't go through those things, same things. That's why it says, I know your work, your tribulation, your poverty, because we are the ones that's impoverished. Mm. My brother, the question, the comment was made that the truth and the commandments is not authentic. The truth and the commandments. The Bible, the, the, the comment was made that the Bible is not authentic. Mm -hmm. um, could you share on that? Because they're ones that feel... But then they put it into their beliefs. It's kind of it's kind of like an oxymoron of other faiths. And the comment was made in the last conversation, the last uh, state, um, show with um, the other faith, is that the Bible is not authentic. The Bible is not authentic. And that what, what we are reading, what we're sharing, what you're sharing on today, and coming from the scriptures that you're talking about, is, is not authentic. And it wasn't inspired. Can you can you share on that? So, so answering that, so the the question is, the Bible is the Bible authentic, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So everything that we've read so far shows that the Bible is authentic because exactly. we've read we read our history, we have read our history out of the Bible, and our history is what historical facts. Yeah. Anything that's prophesied, if something is prophesied, and um. If something is prophesied and then it comes to pass, it's no longer a prophecy, it's history. And the things that we, we read Deuteronomy 28, where we were, we were taken, this land was taken. Mm -hmm. That was prophecy and it, it came to pass. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Listen, I got to admire how you guys came. You guys used the Bible. I mean, that, that's admirable for me and I'm sure for whoever been listening this whole time that you guys stuck with it and I mean and came out with scriptures, biblical prophecies, and, and I mean, we, we, we have we have to have another visit with you guys mm -hmm. anytime you guys want to come. I mean, I'm, I'm educated. I'm sure everybody else is. We're coming to the top of the aisle, to the end of the show. Uh, you guys are listening. This is WEFT 90.1. Uh, we're just wrapping up another show. We're here with IUIC. You guys go ahead and quick please uh, share your school real quick. So we're Israel United in Christ, Chicago chapter. Our address is 4339 West Division Street, Chicago, Illinois. And you can contact us, 855-484-4842, extension 712. That's our contact information. Give us a call. Amen. And thank you all the callers that called in. Thank you for sharing and sharing your comments. And we had a lot of callers that shared with you guys that enjoyed listening to you. They're saying it. Um, Brother Trion, and there's so many that called in and said they're enjoying the show, listening from all over. So again, thank you, and the phone's still ringing. God bless you on today, and have a great day. We're getting ready to tune in to our next show. Again, you listen to WFT Champagne, streaming live right now at WEFT.org. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. 
The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth